It's gonna be one of them videos. <laughs> it's gonna be one of them videos. <laughs> so why I quit my career to be, a professional career to be, as a qualified professional chef. Now, here we go. I joined college in 2015, um, and in that space of time, I got, first off I got an NDQ qualification, then I got a VRQ qualification, and I got another VRQ qualification in level three, and two of those were diplomas, and the other one was, um, whatever they used to call it, the MVQ, I can't quite remember, that wasn't a diploma. Um, so, in, with those qualifications, I could emphasise on the could, I could go anywhere with that qualification and get any job, if they choose to have me, obviously. And I could go anywhere. Because I held a professional cookery Qualification. I held three cooking qualifications, two of which would stun most employers. To have that, these kind of diplomas in my hands was a key to the future. I couldn't fathom myself doing anything else. I couldn't think of doing anything else. It was my future. It was everything. It was what I was so determined to do. I was so determined to be this... Five star chef, you know the stuff, if you watch MasterChef, that's the kind of stuff we do. That's the kind of stuff that I was doing. And and that's what I, what I used to do. And I used to enjoy it at college. So, moving on. My job, I started at a five star hotel. And uh, I was warned on the first day even on the in fact not the first day it was on the interview i was warned on the interview there's a lot of banter and there's um and don't let anything get under your skin and that already was a, a strange turning point because i thought okay that's a bit bizarre why is that being offered already you know that that sort of you know so obviously it was something that the employer had to mention or felt that they needed to mention so, moving on, it, this question, why did you leave as a chef? All that gorgeous food and all that skill, that artisan skill, and how I managed to get an interview recently at an artisan bakery that had been on TV. Um, and I know what you're all thinking, you thought, you turned that down, and yes, I turned that down. I could have worked in an artisan bakery that had been on TV. My manager, I think she's, oh, she's the director, the director of that place is a star on um, whatever the show's called, I can't quite remember, but she's a star on the show on a TV series and she's the one that does the cookery school and I got an interview there and they offered me a job but I will go back to that when I describe why and what led to the decision of going to a bakery rather than being a chef so nothing can ever prepare you for telling somebody what stress is like, a lot of people, I say a lot of people, but people I've met have exaggerated a lot about stress. But then again, we don't really know because it's one of them things that people deal with stress differently. And what's not stressful to you is very stressful to them. So that, that in mind, that I understand that, they were stressed about certain things. But with this kind of stress, was, um, I don't want to start sounding like I'm rising above people like, like i'm trying to get above people say i had the worst of it you, you know kind of thing i had it bad but i'm not going to sit here and say i had the worst of it because i literally have no idea what you have gone through 
So I cannot, I cannot sit here and just say I've had the worst of it. But all I can say is I can say I've had a worst case scenario, maybe not, not even that. I have the um, experience, that's the word, the experience of a bad experience of stress. So that sounds a bit better, a bad experience of stress. So with that being said, there was a lot of banter. Uh, I used to absolutely hate coming in, um, it, but it was just like, it's a job for life, it's money, it's this and it's that. And those were the kind of things that were just racing around my mind. It's, it'd be okay, it's my job, you get paid, you don't do it to enjoy it. Emphasise on what I just said there. And, and all these silly things, and I never thought I'd leave the way I did. I never thought I'd leave, full stop, I never thought I'd leave. And, and that being said, I left. I took my leave. I walked out. I didn't even give him a chance to, you know, explain anything. I just walked out. A few weeks um, into, in fact, it might, yeah, it'd be a few weeks into August um, before I left, the weeks leading up to leaving, I had a mental breakdown. I had never had anything like that before. I had never, I was like, this is, this is what was sad about it. I used to be so good at being organised. I used to be so good at um, controlling emotions. I used to be very good at doing all that. And then that job was a turning point and I was shocked at how even today it has affected me that job that I did the fact that there was banter some of it was a bit of bullying some of it they were just persisting they were constantly persisting you to join in this banter when it wasn't funny the jokes weren't funny they were hurting me so they're not jokes anymore so moving on this kind of atmosphere was something I could not do. And then the head chef was very shouty at me. Like, I do not, I do not deal with shouting. I do not sit there. I do not get paid to be shouted at. And you can disagree all you want as a chef. That's, that comes with the job. So it's nothing personal. But I still don't think it's appropriate because sometimes... You didn't need to shout. You didn't need to shout at me. And that was like another thing. Further on, before, this is before the few weeks. Well, like, in fact, it was getting close actually, but I started to get oral memory loss. And this is a form of stress, um, which this... All, this job was making me very poorly. It was making me a very poorly person. And this whole forgetting thing, I couldn't believe what I forgot. Like, the lady I work with, uh, I won't reveal her name. She's not a chef anymore anyway. She packed it in herself. But she uh, said to me, uh, you know you've got a responsibility, don't you? And I said, yeah, okay. Put these in at this specific time and put these in at this specific time. Before then, before that day, I had brilliant memory. I had never really forgotten anything. I had a brilliant memory. And then all of a sudden, I just blanked. And completely forgot what she said to me. So I was trying to run around doing the restaurant work as well as doing a party that function that was going on in the next room. And I completely forgot what she told me. So I know what you're thinking is that's just human nature to forget things. It is, but not to the level that I had it. It was just ridiculous. Like, I forgot everything. I couldn't remember what I did two minutes ago. Every single time. Someone told me something, I forgot it right after. And, like... 
I can't explain it any other way than that. Then it, it was just I, I just couldn't do anything. Like I couldn't remember to do anything. So that being said, <laughs> I just forgot instead, and that made me very very upset. That the fact that I was trying to do a good job and I was not doing a good job, and then my manager, my head chef was getting concerned and he was telling me he wanted a serious chat with me and then went on a holiday and then left me hanging after saying that um and then th th that sort of emotional stress with it was draining me it drained everything I, everything i was happy about when everything that i loved when everything that i i lived for my whole life that i thought i had in front of me had just gone out the window at that point when all this was happening and I kept telling myself maybe it's time to accept that this job isn't for you and I thought that hard because I had I had always coped in the kitchen I have always coped at college I always coped and I had a bad group I had a group of people who were just immature, who were just childish, and they were looking to pick arguments and were just, they were not friends. They were people who were just immature and, and just, like, I can't even explain what my group was other than just immature. And, like, not all of them, like, I won't say that about all of them. There was, there was a few that I thought I, I actually genuinely liked and I was friends with, but there was, well, the vast, vast majority of them were, you know. I always coped at college, so I, I, I took my leave. But the kind of stuff that we did, rabbit and, uh, we did all the baking side of things as well, and Charlotte Royal and, or Royale. Uh, we did some really gorgeous things, and it, it, that was good. That was the good part of the job. Was the cooking? I. It's not nothing to do with the cooking. It's it's not the cooking that was the problem with the job. So moving on, uh, I took my leave because I was on the sofa, crying my eyes out in complete distress at the fact that I couldn't remember anything. At the fact that I was emotionally drained. I had a form of black cloud of depression over me. I had, I had, I still have it now. For some reason, it's developed a massive anxiety, which I had never had before, which is a crying shame because I never used to have anxiety. I never used to have depression or these sad mood swings. I never used to have any of that. And that's, be that's before I had that job. And unfortunately, it seems to have triggered a reaction of, um, of this. It, it just seems to have caused this. Bear with me. So, I could have gone to an artisan bakery. I went. I did a shift. Uh, they did me an induction. I says, right, it's going to be um, so much a year salary. Um, and said to me, what do you see yourself doing in 10 years time? Now, I should have been ready for this question because most of the adults here on Artcraft are going to say the same thing. You should have been expecting that question because that's a question that you've just got to know. And you know what? I didn't know the answer to it. I thought, I sat there in silence like this, a couple of minutes. And you know what? I couldn't have made the biggest lie of my life then. I see myself doing baking in a kitchen, something along them lines, um, as that's where my passion lies, so on and so on. Five minutes later, after he said, do you want the job? I refused it. I refused that artisan bakery job. I did that because I didn't see any difference in kitchen work. I didn't see any difference in being a chef and being that. 
there's not the sh there's not the the stress obviously but it's the fact that the building was all enclosed very tight space very hot nine hours on end you just think really is this all there is to this job so i decided not to do it so going to a topic i want to talk about i watched a ted talk yesterday uh but uh obviously it was ted talks are very brilliant i'd check them out if i were you because they're, they're really good um so presented by emily esfahani smith and that lady was giving the vision of what society is and she was giving us the vision of happiness that you have to be happy and the other one being journey and then there have been four pillars and what I got from this life isn't just about being happy it, in fact it isn't I can tell you for a fact my life isn't the way it is now because I'm happy or not only just happy it's not just about being happy it's about what your purpose is I needed a purpose I can't be happy if I haven't got a purpose and my purpose wasn't in a kitchen my purpose wasn't in an artist and baker and my purpose was to help people and it was under my nose the whole time my purpose is to help people in distress in an emergency situation on orcraft on everything I do is because I want to help people that is what I'm on the planet for. I am here for a purpose. And now that I know what that purpose is, I can now move on with my life being happy, knowing I got a purpose to continue. And that is an amazing thing to feel because you've no idea how it feels to know what your purpose on the planet is. I have been asking that question for so long, so long it felt. It's a short space of time, but it felt like a blooming long time. I was questioning myself every day, I was depressed every day, you know, and it got very serious. It got so serious. Like, it over a little tiny thing, what seems to a lot of people a little tiny thing turned into suicide and depression I was suicidal I'd never been suicidal before I couldn't fathom the thought I was thinking about it like why I have done so much positive in my life and I just didn't take that in at all. The fact that I got on there, I got student of the year at my college on the last year I did my diploma. That's what counts. I passed my driving test, which took me four attempts to do and was very difficult. I failed my theory test once, passed on the second time. I was one point off passing it first time. If I hadn't gone through the lane on the roundabout, I would have passed first time driving as well. I passed two examinations for tuba with one distinction and one pass. I can play the piano in a beautiful way because everybody tells me that's how I play it. I, apparently I can play beautifully and I know that I can play beautifully. I'm not going to ever undermine myself on that. I'm never, I know it sounds very boastful and you know, you know I'm better, you know, that's not how I want, how I want to sound it. It's just, I come off people the way that they explain it. And the list is going on. I was an excellent baker still. 
And you know what? Out of everything that has been taken from me from that job, you know what's not been taken is my pride and my things that I was proud of that were taken away that I managed to get back. I could get that pride back. I could get everything that I was proud of. I was so proud that I, and I was so silly to realise how brilliant I am. I have never been so wrong in my life. Never. I enjoy the job I'm doing now because it makes me feel good to help people. And that, not only that, that's my purpose. This is what I'm doing from now on until my journey changes. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that's something that's going to be obviously an ongoing thing. It might change. I might think, right, which it will change. I know it will because I've got plans to get on to doing nursing. Nursing. And I want to do nursing at some point. I do. I want to study a diploma, uh, not a diploma, a degree on nursing. And I want to do that. So, <laughs> further on, on the things that I should be proud of. I am very immaculate in my room. I'm very tidy in here. I always keep it clean. Um, I bought myself a new computer with my wages that I earned myself. You know, I bought this table down here, you won't be able to see it. I bought a table down here for my television and I've got a telly up here now. The telly was from downstairs, but I've got it up here now. In fact, I can show you, um, actually, with that set up that I've got there. Just bear with me. Okay, there's my telly and there is my shelf. And I got a bargain with that. That was, that was, um, how much was it now? It was, sorry. It was £20. <laughs> Second hand, £20 from a furniture store. And, oh gosh, that's the best bargain I've ever seen. <laughs> um, so, what my message in this whole video is, why did you leave your career, or a career to be? Well, to tell you the truth, it wasn't my purpose. If it's not my purpose, what's the point? And I know what I say, you can change that purpose. But I didn't know what I was doing when I went to college. I just did the diploma, I just did the qualifications. I didn't know what I was going to do with them. To be honest, I wasn't entirely positive anyway, really. Even though I was so set on doing it, I, there was still something that was holding me back, thinking, is this really what you want to do? So I put that thought at the back of my mind and then just went on with it. Um... But yeah, like, I am doing so much better. I just need to adapt and grow and, you know, and improve. I want to improve on a lot of things. I would like to improve on... Um, my anxiety and these depressive mood swings and if you are questioning why am I not happy don't look for happiness because it doesn't work and in this modern society I've got a feeling it won't work it might work for some people but the chances are it won't the chances are very slim if you look for happiness and if you find it good but it doesn't last long. But I, I can't be the one that sits here and tells you that. Look for a purpose instead. Right. What am I good at? What is my biggest quality? My biggest quality I knew all along. I just ignored it. I am kind, considerate, generous. What more could you ask for a job in care? Because... I didn't think I'd be doing this job. <laughs> I didn't think I'd enjoy it as much as I'm enjoying I absolutely love my job. I do apologise. I'm just going <laughs> to... I 
absolutely love my job. And when they ask me to do nights, yeah, sure, I'll do nights. I love it so much. And I'm so proud at the fact that I have come together from a very low point and proved myself wrong and said, actually, your purpose is blah, 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 is what I've said. And that amazes me. The fact that I now know what my purpose is in life. And I can go on until it's storytelling time. Don't tell your story in a way that you are, you are just seeking happiness. Tell your story in a way that you are looking for a purpose in life. The difficulty is with a lot of people is they don't know their purpose. But what if I don't know my purpose? But you do. Everybody does. And I know that's hard to fathom because the way mental health works sometimes it doesn't allow you to think about that but there would have been one quality and even if you've not shown it yourself yet it will come give yourself a chance to show yourself what you can do if you know you're good at one thing every single suicidal or depressed person i've talked to on orcraft they've said one thing that i've given them and they've said to me, well, I've said to them rather, what are you good at? They think about it. I don't know. I don't know. What subject do you enjoy at school? Art. Right. We're getting somewhere. How good at art do you think you are? I can draw. I can do this. All right, then. <laughs> so what you just told me was not a lie. It was a cover up. Because that's sort of what mental health does. It's like a cover up of what you're actually, what you actually do. And they say art and right. So go and do something in art. That's your purpose. We're all on the planet. I think I uh, honestly believe with all my heart that we have to have a purpose. We're on this planet for a purpose. Like my mum. Mum's purpose was to be a teacher. My dad's purpose was to work in uh, the, the ambulance or something along in HR to advise people. A few other people, I work at the care place I work at. I feel that that's the same as well, that people know that. And you know what? My job isn't just about wiping bums and doing all the horrible job. It's not about that. You mean much more to those people you are their friend, you are their pillar, you're what holds them up. Most of them, you're what, you're everything to this person. Like, I cannot, I, I cannot express this enough on what you mean to people when you're in care. You're not just their care, it's not a carer, you're not a carer. You're their friend. You're there for a shoulder to cry on, that's what you're there for. And that's okay. I can cope with that. And that would be very difficult for other people. This is my purpose. That doesn't mean you have to rise above it or be better, better than me, or do this or do that. You do something different if you feel like that's not something you can do. There will be something you can do because there's so much out there that I have learned you can do. You go If you're playing on computers every day, play ICT, do something on ICT. If you're on a computer, if you're doing work, what you're doing on a computer. So, that being said, I'm so proud I found a purpose. And I'm going to close the video here. Just if you are questioning why you're here, purpose. Excuse me. The purpose to what you're doing, to, to life. And one, one last thing, uh, I have a lot of problems with my digestion at the moment. I should just saw that that's one of them digestion things I get very, very often. I'm taking some medication for it. Um, apparently I've got some sort of ulcer now in the lining of my stomach. 
or something. Um, and it was quite painful. Um, on a night time it is, I can't, cannot eat spicy food. It makes me very poorly. I was got the sweat on. I was like this, a sweating, um, red hot, and my belly was just like it was like a like a burn, it was literally burning me inside. That's what it felt like, and not a nice feeling. So, but I'm okay. I got a doctor's appointment on Monday next week, um. So we're having a look at that. So thirty minutes. <laughs> I didn't expect to be going this long. So I will see you all in the next video. Um. So bye bye for now. Stay awesome, and remember, if you don't know what you're doing, we all have a purpose. We all have that purpose somewhere within us, hiding. We just gotta pull it. We just gotta, you know, we just gotta tell people. Just make sure I've not got a cup of coffee here. Yeah, so I will see you in the next video. Bye bye for now. I can get to the button to turn it off. <laughs>